fair and only slightly unbalanced Tom Harbin here with you. You need to know this. On September 11th, 2001, which is what, 12 years ago today? Our nation was attacked by a small group of people, perhaps fewer than 100. They were financed by the son of a Saudi oil sheikh who we had supported for years fighting the Soviets in Afghanistan when we helped him organize what was then called the Mujahideen and today is known as Al-Qaeda. This large attack by a small group of people, I, you know, really what it did was it provoked more than a decade. I mean, here we have, you know, 11, 11 years on of national insanity here in the United States. Two completely unnecessary wars, an ongoing involvement in the Middle East that is destroying our national honor. It's killing off our soldiers and Marines and, and wounding them in record numbers and depleting our coffers. It was not another nation that attacked us on 9-11. It was not an act of war. It was more like when Tim McVeigh blew up the federal building in Oklahoma City, hoping to repeat the scenario played out in the novel The Turner Diaries, where a federal building was bombed, and the government so re overreacted that it took away all the guns from the good Christian white people. In that novel, which continues to inspire militia and Tea Party members across the country, those good white people rose up, killed off the government and all the Jews, Catholics, and people of color, and America once again became the white Anglo-Saxon Christian nation that it was at its founding. Well, Tim McVeigh, Tim McVeigh tried uh, to you know, play out the Turner Diaries, and he failed. President Bill Clinton tracked him down, arrested him, convicted him, and put him to death even. The stateless criminals... Osama bin Laden, his passport had been pulled by the Saudis. He literally was stateless. He had been deported to Sudan because he had tried to attack Saddam Hussein, Iraq. And Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who was a Pakistani, I believe, were hoping to produce such a huge response from the United States that we would be drawn into their battle in the Middle East, their battle against secular governments like Iraq, like that of Saddam Hussein's. They wanted us to help them turn those secular states like Iraq into Islamic religious states. They succeeded. Bin Laden said he would drain America economically. He did. Bin Laden won round one anyway of all this because of the essential naivete and stupidity of the Bush-Cheney administration and that schoolboy, chest-thumping, testosterone-driven response of George W. Bush to the crime, and make no mistake, it was a crime. It was not an act of war. It was not another nation. The crime of 9-11. And that was and is no way to run a nation's foreign policy. 9-11 should remind us that there will probably be future attacks on the United States, God forbid. Hopefully none will be as big as 9-11, but it's not inconceivable. So the conversation we should be having today about how to respond in the future when non-state actors like bin Laden or Tim McVeigh commit horrific crimes of violence against America and Americans is really the conversation that's necessary. We should be strengthening international institutions for justice and policing, institutions like Interpol and the International Criminal Court at The Hague. These actually would have been the appropriate responses to bin Laden. And, and, and frankly, I mean, the reality here is most of the world was expecting us to use Interpol and the criminal court at The Hague at the time on 9-11. I mean, there was a candlelight vigil in downtown Tehran, Iran, in solidarity with and support of the United States the day after 9-11. Afghanistan offered to arrest bin Laden on behalf of America and turn him over to an impartial third nation for a trial. But George W. Bush refused because, as he told his biographer, Mickey Herskowitz, he so wanted to be a war president. In 1999, Herskowitz was writing his autobiography, and Bush told Herskowitz that being a war president would give him the political capital necessary to privatize Social Security. And it nearly worked. You'll recall when he was reelected in 2004, the first thing he tried to do in 2005 with his new term was privatize Social Security. We should never again allow such a thing, a president using a terrorist attack 
to get us into phony wars so that he can enrich his bankster buddies. We should never again let that happen. 9-11 is also a time for us to reflect on the legacy of the years of Bush insanity. It's time to put formally, officially, an end to the practice of extraordinary rendition, torture, and all this wildly excessive and unnecessary wiretapping and data gathering. It's time for us to reorganize our intelligence services, to prosecute the people and the corporations who committed crimes from Abu Ghraib to Guantanamo. It's time to cry, prosecute the war criminals in the Bush administration, who just two weeks ago, President Obama requested to have full immunity from prosecution for war crimes. Why would he ask for that if he didn't know that they were guilty of something? It's time to rein in the defense contractors and end the practice of privatizing our military and our intelligence functions. No more Blackwaters, no more no-bid contracts for Halliburton. It's time to break up Homeland Security. In fact, let's stop using that word. That word came from Rudolf Hess, the number two guy in the Adolf Hitler administration. Home, homeland. Heimat, is saying. Let's return to a more rational and accountable system of policing and intelligence gathering. Where different agencies have different mandates and they hold each other accountable and they act as checks and balances. I mean, this, this anniversary of 9-11 should both be a, a time of reflection and a time of action. We now have had enough time and distance from 9-11 to see the events clearly. It was a crime, not an act of war. The perpetrators were criminals, not noble warriors or soldiers. And we should have dealt with them the same way Bill Clinton de dealt with Tim McVeigh. Arrested, convicted, sentenced. End of story and closure achieved. So the next time, God forbid, an event like 9-11 or Oklahoma City happens, hopefully, the next time, we'll know how to conduct ourselves. I think the fact that we're capable of learning lessons is what we're seeing right now, where Obama comes and says, hey, I want to go bomb Syria, and Congress says, oh, wait a minute, we're right back.